Kumar. Good morning. Good morning, Meena. How are you? Keeping on? Oh, good, good, good. I'm good. How are you? Very good. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Okay. So, last time, yesterday, when we met, we discussed about the TQM on the film production. Mm -hmm. And uh, right. the second yeah. part of the question is a very important one. It's all to do mm -hmm. with our F2 area. It's all about the sharp cases are going up because of the success of the film. And the director's mm -hmm. field, because of that one, the cost of finance is some of the board members are concerned that the successful launch of will increase our share price. They are misplaced mm -hmm. concern that this means that we must now be paying more for finance. In other words, right. cost of funding will go up. Please discuss the right. implications of a successful film launch for our VAC in order to address the both fears. Okay. This is the area probably they will expect you to be a specialist. You are a financial specialist. And mm -hmm. what do you think? When the share price goes up, will the cost of finance go up for the company? Mm, if the uh, if the share price go up, um, um, no, I don't think no, I don't think so. Yeah, how to explain that one? Yeah, how to explain that one? Now you can see you buy shares in a company. Hmm? The mm -hmm. share price will can go up. When the share price goes right. up, surely the shareholder may get some capital gains, but it right. may not have a direct impact on your cost of finance. Right, is it? The company will be yeah. paying the same old dividend, whatever they have been paying, it's all right. So, so on and mm -hmm. that one. But the, the question is somewhat little bit tricky. They are not asking about the cost of equity. They are asking about the VAC. The okay. VAC means we know what, what is VAC. VAC is the, the rate demanded by the financial markets for companies' long-term mm -hmm. funding. That is what right. we call the VAC. VAC is always the rate demanded by the financial markets for law companies' long-term funding. And we know companies' long-term fundings are made up of two components, equity and loans. Yeah. Right? And we use the VAC as the rate to discount the cash flows to arrive at the value of a business. Mm -hmm. right? So generally, not generally, it's a, it's a, it's a rule. Uh, there is an inverse relationship between the VAT and the company's value. Inverse relationship. Yes. Right? When the VAT goes up, the company's value comes down. When the VAT comes down, the company's value yeah. goes up. Yes. Right? So that's the relationship. So when the share price mm -hmm. goes up, the, that means mm -hmm. the company's value goes up actually. Yes. When the share um, price goes, so the up. goes down. And the VAC yeah. goes down. Effectively, right. effectively, they are, we are not going to pick up the question is we, are, we must be now paying more for finance. In fact, there is hmm. no change in what we are going to pay. But effectively, right. the cost of VAC or the VAC will come down when the share price goes up because there's an oh, inverse yeah. relationship between the VAC and the, share, the, the business value. Yes. Business value is equity plus the debt capital. So debt may not yes. remain, debt may remain same. Equity when it goes up, the market capitalization goes up, effectively the VAC comes down. Right. But what you are going to pay will be almost the same. Same, yes. Right. So in fact, it has no impact whatsoever on the existing finance. Mm -hmm. On the existing finance. Right? The, the present share capital structure, the present uh, loan structure, there is no impact just because the share price goes up. There is nothing happening for the present financial structure for the present uh, scenario. Okay. Right? So uh, basically what happens is the, 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 for the investor, the return what they get may be low because now the share price mm -hmm. is high. And they get the same mm -hmm. dividend. If they get the same dividend, the return may be low, effective. Low. Yeah. That can happen. Mm -hmm. So this is what you mm -hmm. have to explain in this little mm -hmm. scenario. 
right? So we okay. say the what is right. weighted average cost of capital? Weighted average cost of capital is the rate that is demanded by the financial markets for companies' long-term funding. Companies' long-term mm -hmm. fundings are made up of equity capital and uh, loan long-term capital, long-term long finance, yes. long-term finance, right? Uh, there is an mm -hmm. inverse relationship between the VAT and the business value. Right. So when the share capital goes, when the share prices goes up, the share value goes up, and therefore the business value goes up, and in effect the VAT will come down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. However, in terms right. of payment of in payment, in terms of cash flow, it will not have any impact on the amount what we are going to pay. Right. right. However, there may be a situation like this. When the share prices goes up, the market mm. expectation may be that the company is doing well and that they might expect a higher dividend. Mm. You understand? Right. right. When, the, when, the, when, the companies do, when the share prices are going up, now you and I, we go and invest in companies in shares when we know that the company mm. is doing well, why are we investing? Mm. One thing we believe the share prices will further go up. The other thing right. we believe because the company is doing well, they have they will pay bigger dividend. Okay. Yeah. So there may be a, some kind of a pressure on the directors mm. to maintain a higher dividend based on those expectations. Right. Now that might be a possible scenario which is probably a reasonable cause for directors concern that mm. they will have to pay more for finance mm -mm. yeah not necessarily not necessarily but it may be the shareholders will expect because the company is doing well a higher dividend so they may expect a, a bigger dividend and that means a bigger cash outflow from the company. Right. Yeah. But on the other, uh, on another side, we can see when the when the company makes big profits, the risk mm -hmm. for the lenders will come down. Yes. And therefore, there may be even the the you may be able to negotiate loans at even better terms than the present mm -hmm. terms. Yeah. So in the financial market, many things can happen when these share prices changes and when the company is successful. On one side, right. there is absolutely no, because the company is under no obligation to pay higher dividends. So the company will pay mm -hmm. the same dividend when the share price goes up. In fact, in a way, in a way you can argue with and say because the share prices are going up, the shareholders are going to get a return in form of capital appreciation, capital gains, and therefore, you don't need even to increase the dividend. Mm. Right? Yeah. Because you invest money in shares for two returns. One is the capital gains, one is the dividends. So if the company is doing yeah. well, when the company is doing well, if the shareholders are going to get big capital gains, there is no need for you to increase the dividend. Yeah, I see. Yeah. So you can so this is what the examiner is expecting here there is no very clear answer but you have to put up all your points across so a couple of points yeah. we came across is the VAC is made up of cost of equity and cost of debt and VAC mm -hmm. there is an inverse relationship when the share price goes up the VAC will come down however the cash mm -hmm. payment will be the same because the interest you don't need will not change just because the company is successful and also the dividend, there is no obligation for the directors to increase the dividend and therefore the dividend also may be the same. So arguably there is no cash flow, you no know, cash uh, increase of cash outflow because of the share price increase. Mm -hmm. but having said that one, because of the share price expectation, the, because of the company's good performance, the shareholders may expect a higher dividend this year than the last. Hmm. On the yeah. other side, on the other side, because the company is performing well, there's less risk for the lenders, and you may be able to even bargain for lower rates of interest. Right. So these are the points that you have to discuss, 
and 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 keep it in that way so you don't need to say that you have to increase the dividend you don't need to say anything but you have to just say these are the possible reactions that can happen inside this scenario mm. so that's simply yeah. the, uh, the answer for the second part of that question it has a little bit of technical side of it but so long as you can cover up some of the points what i mentioned i think we should be all right for a question like this. right all right yeah. so finally what you will say is that you will probably end up this question uh, this scenario saying that you are very happy with the final outcome after going through a lot of efforts all this kind of a thing and um, there is no fear of uh, immediately kind of paying more for finance but uh, in the long term there may be expectations of higher dividends and that may have a pressure on the directors to increase the dividend which may means bigger cash outflows mm, yeah so that's simply what we need to answer right so now okay. with that one we have just completed the first four mocks the first four hour the three hour paper is now completed you would have seen it flowed from one to the other started with a problem in the dinosaur crash then second one right. was it's all about the, the disclosures third one was all right. about the target pricing something like that or yeah it's all about total quality yeah. yeah yeah and now we have got the total quality management because it has become a success we want to implement the success into our other projects and also about the little bit about the share price going up and little bit on the financial aspect Right. Okay. So we have just completed that one. So now let's move into the next mock, a uh, next four three hour paper. So this is what I send it to you today. Let's look at that. Mm -hmm. It's all about the value chain. So I think we discussed little about the value chain yesterday. So let's look at to refresh our mind on the value chain before we apply mm -hmm. to the film industry. What is a value chain? Right. Mm -hmm. What is value chain? If you remember value chain, what it is? Okay. Um, you remember it has five primary activities. Yes, five, seven, and four, uh, four secondary four, activities. Four support yes. activities. So, right. Yeah. Basically, the value chain is the the linked set of value creating activities, starting from mm -hmm. basic raw materials in a manufacturing industry. Mm. ultimately with the support activities to bring that finished product and for that we have the margin or rather we sell it and the sell the between the selling price and what we have added as value is what we call the margin or the profit mm. so the business of film industry or for that matter any industry it's a chain of creating values right now creating values and you can see it's a chain if one part one component of the chain gets broken you can't hmm. create the value right you can't create the value so inbound logistics operations outbound logistics marketing sales and service now the examiner will not expect you to draw this chart or anything like that but you may be able to, you may need to explain what is a value chart and also to mention in for the film industry, what is inbound logistics, right? You remember this uh, crew, the, the, the films are uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, film in different, different locations. Right. So you have to take these uh, cars into various locations you have to provide them with accommodation and all that safety timing mm -hmm. you know some of these mm -hmm. super superstars if you can't just take them on normal ordinary vehicles you might have your limousines and all that kind of a thing so that is what we call inbound logistics in the film industry right if you don't have properly organized inbound logistics you may not be able to take that cast into that particular location and that ultimately if that is not happening the whole chain will collapse yeah whole chain will collapse then 
the operations. Operation is basically the production, the shooting of the film. Right. The shooting of the film. Then we have the outbound logistics. Outbound logistics in this particular case in our film industry, it's all about the distribution of the film. Yes. You can produce the film, you can do all the logistics, but if you don't have a proper distribution of the film, right marketing channels, your film will just right. be in, the, in your library without it moving. Then five right. happen where they have the marketing and sales. Mm -hmm. Promotion, meeting people, doing all this, advertising, all that is basically marketing and sales. Very unlikely yeah. that we will have something called servicing because the film, once it is done, it is done. Okay. Yeah, the, normally the service is all about this after sales warranties and all that kind of a thing. Now in a film, you don't have that kind of a scenario happening. Right. So that may not be there in your value chain for a film. Film, once you market it, it's marketed and then the people will look at it. Then we have to look at the right. four support activities. What are the four support activities? We have the procurement. Now what is procurement here? It's the procurement of the main cast. Hmm. Procurement of the main cast because they are very busy people. Already they may be signed for many other films. So right. getting the right people into your film at the right time is some person because you remember in this pre scene you can't, you are not going to meet the main actors and the cast. You have to mm. meet their agents, negotiate, find out whether so and so the star is available during this period, that period. It is the, his manager or the agent only knows about his diet. Right. So you have to negotiate the price and you have to negotiate everything and you remember you must take the uh, people from the guild the, it's like a union, they are in a, in, a, in a professional guild, you must take as much as possible from the guild. Mm. Then also there are these supporting actors roles which you can probably get on an on a outsourced agency, outsourced basis to a particular agency. Maybe a okay. thing about, you know, about the school children, you can't go and check for all the schools, you get some agent, event manager, some person who will organize the school children for your part of the shoot. Yes. But you can see the procurement becomes very important. What about the technology development? Now we see in the film industry, it's all about the 3Ds and all these 4Ds and all that kind of a thing. So we have to have proper technology. You remember we went into a little bit of a crisis in the earlier film, but now we have to remember one thing. Uh, that mock is completely gone, Veena. Hmm. Because now I have seen, uh, because some of the students, after doing so many mocks, you will try to bring the dinosaur crush tree into the unseen in your real exam. Right. And because that, 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 that mock is completely gone. Now we must not think about it now when you are doing this one, because you can't take anything out of that one and put it to here. Hmm. Okay. You can take anything from the pre-scene, but, but the mock that what they have done is completely gone. So we should not, because sometimes when you do too many mocks, uh, we might think Dinosaur Crash had a, had a problem, and we might talk about that one. Now no more problems. That's gone. Right. Mm -hmm. So, technology <laughs> development, it's all about the, the, the new industry developments that is happening, 4D, all that kind of films happening. Human resource management. Right. Human resource management here is more of because we have the producers in-house. We have producers outsourced, but whatever it is, there is a lot of human resource management, particularly in the motivation area. Right. You have to keep your, because you know, this cast, I was just watching just before I came on uh, this online, I was watching the TV Sri Lanka and some of these uh, Sunday they have a show where they are they bring all these leading teledrama actors and actresses and uh, some of them basically said they were not properly treated, they were not properly cared for by the producers or directors of certain teledramas 
and they don't want to extend those frames anymore. Okay. So you have to have good human resource, human relationship, uh, look at their grievances and see it into their safety because this uh, film industry is a very, very uh, liberal industry. There can be many abuse happening and therefore we have to be very, very concerned about all those safety of the people, the female stars, the young upcoming yeah. stars, all those things they have to look at. So uh, the grievances need to be addressed. So that is what we call the human resource. Hmm. And finally, but not the least, we have, we have already come across this in another in the in the earlier month. It's all about the firm infrastructure. Infrastructure here we are talking about the general management, accounting, financing quality management and planning. Right. Right. So we saw the earlier there was a dispute between the two parties about the, the, the in the earlier mark about the finance division and production division not seen eye to eye. So what we see is then it's it, the whole the whole nine bonds, nine chains must work together to create value, to add value then only you will have the final end product. Right. So this is uh, just a, a overview of our value chain. Before I move into the question, I just want you to know that's one thing in the exam. Don't try to write about the the you know try to draw, draw charts and all that kind of a thing. That is not what is expected. We must apply the value chain to our scenario to our question, but don't talk too much about the general things. That's not expect that is not what is expected of us. Right. <laughs> now let's look at our question. Mm -hmm. So this is a new one. This is now the, the first section we are on. Isabella stops you in the corridor and says the following. I need your help. A firm of consultants has pitched the proposal to BOD to conduct a value chain analysis for maintaining. Our CEO Steven is interested, but he would like us to discuss the proposal further at the next BOD meeting before we decide whether to brief the consultants. He also feels that right. there are other areas where we should explore particularly the strategic focus of the company. I left a copy of the consultant's presentations on your desk. She has asked me to mm -hmm. prepare a board paper on two issues. What would value chain right. analysis involve in the case of maintaining? How might we mm -hmm. involve our staff more in creating value? CEO is unsure mm -hmm. whether we should focus our value chain analysis in a low cost strategy or a differentiation strategy. List after board paper for me, I will review it and present it at the next board meeting. So remember, you are not doing the final board paper. You only have to do the draft board paper. So it need not be, you know, top, top form. It need to be a draft board paper, which the, your finance director will review it and finally will present it at the board meeting. But she will definitely Sorry. buy what you say. So because of that, what you say need to be reliable. What you would say should be trustworthy, should be acceptable. Hmm. Let's look at what the consultants have done. Also to implement value chain analysis for maintaining. So you are given the chart, the primary activities and the support activities. And they say their role. We would facilitate a detailed analysis of maintenance value chain with recommendations for improvement. All relevant maintenance staff will be briefed in detail. That is what they are going to do. So they are going to okay. uh, do a, a kind of a detailed value chain analysis for the company. And also <laughs> the, they will recommend certain improvements and all relevant maintenance staff will be briefed in detail. Okay. Outcome they expect is we anticipate a detailed set of proposal that will leave maintain in a position of a sustainable competitive advantage. So, right. basically, if you manage the value chain well, 
you should get that competitive advantage. Now the advantage mm. can come in two ways. Low cost strategy, differentiation strategy. You remember the Michael Porter says, there are two strategies available to get the competitive advantage. One is right. to go on low cost. Other one is mm. to go on doing something totally different so the people will yeah. not bother about the price, but people will buy it because it's something unique. Yes. Oh, so you have to think how you are going to work through this scenario. <coughs> First of all, what would value chain analysis involve in the case of maintaining? What would value chain analysis involve in creating? How we might involve our staff more in creating value. So there are two questions in the first section. Uh, I always say look for this term and or the word and. The moment you have an mm -hmm. and you must understand there are two sections in that first task. Sure. Yeah. First of all we yeah. have to talk about what would value chain analysis will involve. Now the Corporate consultants have told they are going to do it. So your board is asking, Veena, what will they do? What will the analysis involve? And then how we can involve our staff more in creating value? Right. Okay. Uh, so they might, uh, the, or the consultants might um, define activities as per the slabs like uh, yeah. what 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 do we call um, inbound logistics? What is yeah, operations? The primary activities. Call... That's correct. The primary activities. Yeah. Supporting activities is it? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely they will look at. So the basic approach will be to work through the elements of the value chain. Yeah. Right. And they will be identified by the consultant. So there mm -hmm. are four right. four primary uh, sorry four support activities. Five. And five, and five primary activities. So they will, yes. the, the starting point will be to understand which, what each link in the value chain will contribute, if at all, to the creation of value added for maintain in field production. Okay. So then we can go into each of those value chain components. And now what we do is we apply it exactly to our scenario, just like what I said. Right. So we will talk about each of the, the five primary activities and we will say mm. how it will apply to our scenario. So we have to, this is where we have to be careful. We should not talk general, uh, you know, all those things. We must definitely directly apply to our one. What is procurement for us? Procurement means all uh, um, um, getting all the star cast. Yeah, getting the and, the, uh, and then also the computer, uh, the, the special effects, isn't it? Hmm? Right, yeah. Special effects. Also, it also it involves much more than that. The, the, to do the films, you need the scripts. Hmm? Right. You may have to buy yeah, the so script, script or copy, right? Yeah. yeah? So from the yeah. free scene, you can see there are many procurement that has to go to do a film. Mm. Right. First of all, you have to get a script or you have to do a script. Mm. Right. So mm. for, you have to hire a person to do a script or you have to buy a script, pay in the copyright rights or whatever it means. Right. right. Then it needs the, 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 the crew to act. Mm. Right. So, so first of all, first, first of all, let's, let's our first one is procurement. It's about the inbound logistics. So we are talking about the primary mm. activities. First, talk about the mm. inbound logistics. Better to start with the right. primary activities and then go on. So let's talk about right. the inbound logistics. What are inbound logistics for us. So inbound logistics, we can say for the film, is all about what? It's all about coordinating the, mm. the cars and taking them into different locations wherever where the film is being filmed, providing transport, mm. 
providing accommodation. Hmm. That's the inbound logistics. Uh, come on, I have a question here. Yeah, sure. Um, uh, uh, getting the um, uh, intellectual property, which is the story and everything, is yeah. also considered as an in inbound logistics? Not the inbound logistics, it's more of a procurement, no? Inbound. Because only if, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, because only if we have the script, we can do the operations. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, actually, the, 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 what you can see is the value chain. Value chain is not going according to a particular order, Veena. What we right. do is okay. the whole chain must get together to have a fill or to have a product. Mm -hmm. It need, okay. not be, yeah. need not start from uh, inbound logistics. Before inbound logistics, the procurement will have to come. Okay. Right. It? All right. Procurement, okay. Got point. Got is, procurement is a support activity. Hmm. Procurement is the support activities are necessary because before before anything, arguably you need the finance. Right. Is it right? Finance, the infrastructure you need it before anything happens. So uh, yes. basically this is not a, a kind of a sequence that is happening. It's basically those links are essential. Each link mm. creates a value and without that right. value, the film will not be produced. Okay. So we can either yeah. start with support activities or we can start with primary activity. Okay, fair enough, yeah. Right? So we, we, we started with primary activities. So hmm. the primary activity, the, 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 the first primary activity that we have is inbound logistics. So inbound hmm. logistics is the films are screened, uh, lo, uh, the films are uh, filmed at, dif at different locations, maybe inside, maybe in, in the country, b land or where maybe outside and wherever hmm. you have to find proper accommodation for the cast proper accommodation mm. for the crew, proper right. transport facilities to take mm. them on time, in safety, mm. right? Mm. In safety, in time, and right. according to their own convenience. Mm. Okay. Now some of the general crew, you can put it on a bus and send it. But some of the, mm. the top stars, you may even have to take them on a, on a, airplane or whatever private jet or whatever it may be yeah so that's what we call the inbound uh, the, 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 okay. the, the logistic which need to be properly properly managed without mm -hmm. that the the uh, it can make major failures in the film industry so right. the consultants will analyze <coughs> our way of mm -hmm doing the inbound logistics with, and mm. then they will say whether it is all right or whether it is not. Right. The second one is primary. It's all about the operations. Operations. Yeah. Operations is basically the production of the film. Production of the film. Yeah. yeah. So editing and um, mm. you know the, the shooting of the film. The Mm. The cameras, whatever, all that is what we call the operations and that is really the shooting of the film. Right, yeah. Then we must discuss about the outbound logistics. Mm. Outbound logistics. Again, it's all about the distribution of the film. Now, you remember the film can get distributed in many ways. One, through the cinemas. Right. The other one, through DVDs. Yeah. The other one, they can be even online. online downloading. Yes. Which is becoming very, very popular nowadays. Right, yeah. So they have to have those facilities, a proper website to do hmm. outbound downloading of the film. Yes. Right. Proper coordination with the cinemas, hmm. timely booking of the cinema halls. So that hmm. in their own country, they can show according to that one. But for outside the hmm. country, they may be selling the film to another company who will take the rights of the film and, and show it in their own country. Uh, so they have to do that to deliver the film because you have to remember very specially, there can be a lot of uh, uh, piracy tapping of the film 
Right. Even when mm. it is, you may be sending it physical CD or DVD or whatever, you may be sending it online, but there can be lot of, lot of piracy. The other day, one student told me, uh, before the film came on the cinema, uh, the very first day itself, there were in the internet, the, the film pirated copies. So some yeah. fellow, whilst it has been transmitted to that particular location, have been able to hack the, the, the website and get the film released. Right. Million dollars, because you know, these are big, big business. So, you know, they can get, the, they know that the film is going to be transmitted to America. Before that, they will hack your website and take the film out of it. Hmm. So, proper security, proper security measures to ensure that it won't get into unauthorized hands, all that is very hmm. important. So, you right. can see in the film industry, outbound logistics, I think is a very big area. Where it can create value, it can knock you out also. Yes. Market Finance says we saw 90% of the advertising happens at the pre-scene stage, at the pre-launch stage. So hmm. trying to get the proper advertising channels. Good advertising hmm. is very, very important. And also marketing yeah. the film. Right. Become marketing the films. Once it is once you know, in your own country, you may be sharing profit with your own cinema. But in other countries, mm -hmm. you may be sometimes selling in the film. So whatever the way you do it, you have to have a proper marketing structure and proper selling channels to do mm -hmm. that right thing. Okay. Yeah. Now you are not going to neglect the service area. You basically will say in the film industry there is not too much of after sales service happening but hmm. I have seen some of the old films being regenerated okay some of the old films the films that were shown in 1950s 1960s are being regenerated or sometimes they relaunch the film so there may be hmm. certain things they have to do bring it to the new technology and do all that kind of a thing. So there may be new things that can happen. And that is what we call the service. But mm. unlike in okay. the manufacturing industry, we are not going to have warranties and guarantees and all that kind of thing. It's not that what the after sales service is. The service is, it's maybe about the old films being regenerated. Mm. Then we must talk about the support activity. Now, one of the key support activities will be the planning, the project planning in the firm infrastructure. Hmm. Remember the three attributes of planning? It's all about customer focused or viewer focused, proper hmm. budget, and also right. delivery time. Quality. Delivery time. Oh, yes. Yes. Right. yes. Delivery time. Yeah. The, the quality is the customer focus and budget hmm. and the delivery time. So, yeah. planning is very important. So, there has to be a project committee for each film who will properly monitor and do it. And also, with what we learned yesterday, we can apply the total quality management concept. Mm. So, all right. what we know, we must try and put it up in the paper. If we can find time, do it. Right? Total quality management is a good, uh, good uh, thing to put it on the firm infrastructure. Then right. the human resource management, it's all, it's not only about in man, in the management of our, our own staff, it's all about even managing our crew, the film cast, to ensure their health, safety, protection mm. for them, all that. Mm. That must be our responsibility because there will be a lot of these young female stars coming up. They may be newcomers, mm. there may be some seniors wanting, you know, to take undue advantage of them. So, uh, you have to have proper human resource management structure where they can bring their grievances. So, mm. there has to be a person who will listen to their, whatever their problems and give them the right necessary guidance and develop them all day. Mm. 
and particularly our own in-house, we have some of our own producers, they need to be trained all the time on new technology, right? mm. new technology because they have to be upgraded because there may be people who have been, you remember our uh, one of our fellows have been there for 40 years in this company, right? So some mm -hmm. of these people may need some kind of uh, uh, additional training, etc. So you have to look for that one. Mm -hmm. Then the next value chain, and then I, I think in the technology, technology, right. it's the new technologies of 3D, 4D films coming up. We need to develop mm -hmm. our production capacity to cater mm. into those areas and that's not right. the end that's not the end it's all it's all about even our own IT systems website mm. website right. so we'll be doing more downloading of films that mm. kind of thing so we have to have good IT systems because there will be a lot of people putting up their credit card numbers etc we have to maintain their confidentiality, privacy, because this is a very, very tricky area. Uh, some of these uh, top shots in the public scenario, like the prime ministers, the cabinet ministers, they may not have the time or the privacy to go and see a film in a film hall. But they also mm -hmm. mean human beings. They might want to download a film and see with, you know, a couple of their inner circle friends or maybe with the family or whatever. But mm. if there is no privacy, if I download and if I'm the Prime Minister of Sri Lanka, if I download and watch the film, and if your company is going to expose that one and say, the Prime Minister of Sri Lanka watched this film at such and such time, and that's your, your intruding into his privacy. Right. So you have to maintain that ethical responsibility. So these are, you can see how the value chain can come up in a very big way for a company like Menti. Hmm. Finally, the procurement. Procurement, as you rightly said, it's even though it's a final one, probably it will be one of the key areas. So as I said, there is no priority here. It's all, everything together only create the fit. So procurement mm. means getting the right cast into the film, negotiating right. with the agents, getting mm -hmm. the, build, the time schedule planned up, working mm. according to their time schedule, because mm. some of these casts, they will be acting in many films. Yesterday right. I was listening to something uh, here, they, uh, one of the young girls said uh, she was traveling 300 kilometers on a day mm -hmm. to act on three films on three different locations, same day. Right. So that's a kind of a, a pressure, so you have to coordinate, so you can't even delay. Right. If your film gets delayed by half an hour, she may not be able to stay because she has another appointment in another place 100 kilometers away. Hmm. So, to plan, that is part of the inbound logistic, but to get the people and to plan their time, negotiate the prices, negotiate their terms and conditions is a very, very important one. If the procurement is hmm. not only getting the cost, it's all about the outsourced items like special effects, hmm. even getting outsourced Companies like advertising right. you know, to, to, to sign contracts with you so that they will do the advertising, etc. Because there is a lot of advertising happening, film trailers, TVs, newspapers, all that. So different, different mm. uh, kinds of things need to be done. All that we need mm. to work through and do it. So that's what okay. basically the procurement. But in addition to that, procurement also means your own property, plant and equipment. Now, film industry mm. needs a lot of cameras, you know, all that kind of new technology, new equipment. So that is also mm. procurement. Okay. Outside this question, right. I can. I'm. I'm thinking in a, in in this uh, in this uh, mock scenario. I'm thinking 
uh, they might even think of I, in in Sri Lanka the, that is the experience. I don't know about other countries, but uh, maybe in the other countries also the same experience. Uh, if you are a film manufacturing company, it may be a good thing for you to have a, a cinema a halls network also under your control. Hmm. So buy a company that owns a number of cinema halls. So you are assured that your film once it is produced will be screened without any obstacle because you have your own film film halls where you can show the film straight away. Right. So, this so is even that is called the vertical integration of the... That's uh, a vertical uh, integration. That's a forward yeah. vertical integration. You are right. Yeah. It's uh, a forward vertical yeah. integration because that's the way to go forward. So there may be a question on a possible merger or a possible acquisition of a, a company which has some film, film halls. Right. Yeah. Okay. Maybe even a television company, television channel. Hmm. Now, in our country, we can see almost all these film manufacturers, they have their own television channel also, even the radio channel. So, they hmm. do a lot of advertising and uh, they do all this. Now, maintain we did not see them producing teledramas or tele, tele soaps. Hmm. Now, that's a, another growing area. Yes, for yeah. The, for the small screen to do the films in, you know, every day half an hour or maybe once a week half an hour or whatever. Uh, in India, in Sri Lanka, in these countries, it's becoming very popular. Hmm. So that may be another area of growth for them to move right, into yeah. the television industry. Because the television is the, the, I think the prime source of entertainment today for many people. Many people don't mm. have time to go and watch a film. Or they don't want yeah. to go. Right? They, they are more comfortable at home to put the uh, television and watch a film in that way. So mm. this is outside the question. But I just want to think about it. Because these are possible questions that can come up in this paper. Mm. Right, yeah. Okay. Let's look at the what's the other thing. Mm -hmm. What value chain analysis in the and how might we involve our staff more in creating value? How okay. can we get our staff to create value or to create more value? Mm. So first of all, we must understand what is the role of the staff. Role of the staff is to create value, isn't it? Right, yeah. Role of the, we, we, we take staff to create value for the company. Otherwise, we don't want staff, isn't it? Mm. So we are, we, right. the, the, the fundamental role of any, any staff is to create in their, whatever their job, whatever they do, the idea is for them to create value. If they are not creating value, they are, useless links in the company and they must be sent home. Hmm. Right. So we pay wages and they create value and with their with the wages they have a, a, a sort of a, 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 a way to live. So to add right. more value, how do we do that one? To add more value. Um. In the film industry, uh, we want to add more value. Uh, responsibilities can be assigned. Yeah, responsibilities can be assigned. Very good. Yes, that's a good point. And right, and uh, 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 motivation to put ideas in front of the management. Okay. Yeah, that's a good one. Yes, yes, that's a very good one. You know, uh, um, allowing them to come out with their. Ideas. Yeah, with the ideas. Yeah, so yeah. that entertain, entertain. You remember we were talking about the quality circle yesterday, right? Right. To, and yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. So that kind of a scenario that where they can they they can create value, they can add ideas. Very good. Mm -hmm. uh, 
what's the normal mm -hmm. way, what's the fundamental way we get our staff to create more value for us in a company? Mm -hmm. In a company, how do we create more value from Veena? How do we create more value from Puma? What's the key, key thing what we do for our staff to get them to create more value? Um, what do you think of? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah. What do we do? What is the human resource department doing all the time in your company? Oh, recruitment. Recruitment, yes. After recruitment, yes. Good. After recruitment, very good. After recruitment, now once they recruit you, what will they do to create more value? You are a raw oh, hand. Sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. training. Training, <laughs> exactly. That's right. Training, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Training, you must, uh, that's the way that we create value. That is why we give training, not because we love these people, right? We, mm. we, we give them training so that they become more creative, they can create more value. Right, yeah, okay. Our camera staff, our editing staff, mm. our production staff need to be given mm. more training. Right, yeah. Right, more training. So that once that that's once that kind of a training is given, they will create more value. So what, what you said was good. Recruitment is a good point, right? Get the right people recruited. That way you can add value, right? And also hmm. by by motivating them, yes, you can create value. And also by training them, you create value. Right. Okay. So this is what we should be looking all the time to do. On, on, on one side, the, our staff need to be properly, properly trained to create value. Also, yeah. uh, we should focus, uh, and how might be our staff here? Yeah. So the question is about our staff being getting involved in creating value. And also our marketing staff, the promotion staff, you remember Anton Chan is the distribution manager. The marketing staff, the promotion staff, they also must be trained to do better promotion. Hmm. Better promotion. The old way of doing things may not be the right way. They, we may want to train them to do better promotion and that too we can create value. So that's right. how yeah. you should be looking to answer that part of the question. Second one, hmm. she is unsure whether we should focus our value chain on a low cost strategy or a differentiation strategy. Hmm. So we have to we have to see in the film industry can we right. do a different thing and get more revenue or will the revenue be same? In that case we should go for cost low cost strategy. Hmm. So this is what the Michael Porter said. There are two strategies available. We can go. So the consultant said they will recommend one. So what do you think they will recommend? Whether we should go for a low-cost strategy or a differentiation strategy? Mm, I think um, the consultants might suggest a differentiation strategy yeah. because uh, these days it is all about uh, innovations yeah. and technological advancement. Mm -hmm. So uh, people are more uh, more towards films which have some X factor in them. Yeah, yeah, because so, yeah, uh -huh. you're right, right? Because the people want quality films. Right. Yeah. People don't want cheap films. People want quality films. You can get good hmm. revenue. You can have the film running for sixty days, house full, if you get a good hmm. quality film. So for that purpose. Right. Your focus should be on differentiation. To say your film mm. is different from the film on the next film hall. Right? right so yeah. that's the way the film industry can go forward. So if you try to okay. go take in cheap actors and try to do mm. a film, it may not run the full house for the number of days that you want it to run. So the, hmm. I, the idea is that you must have, a, you, the first of all, you must have a very clear understanding 
the way we are going to create value, right? So right. Uh, whether we should work towards reducing cost or increasing or even at least preventing, at least protecting the cost and should we be concentrating on differentiation strategy? So we know hmm. today the customer, the film weavers have a choice of films. So they will hmm. go and see a film that is something different from the normal other films. Hmm. So if you want to have a competitive strategy, the idea should be to go for a differentiation strategy. Yeah. Because we are, the film industry is a very competitive industry. There will be many films coming and one at the same time. And even people may wait for a better film if our film is not good. So because of that, you have to not focus and because your film critical success factor is to have right cast. The cast may be very expensive. Right. The cast yeah. may be very expensive. And we saw in that uh, one weekend in Moscow, the promotion cost is also fairly expensive, the marketing, 180 million or something. So uh, you mm. need to spend money. So for that purpose, mm. I think the strategy should be to differentiate. Differentiate yeah. through its presence. So the viewers right. will yeah. be familiar with the maintained brand. When the when yes. the maintained film comes, they know it's a super, super film, they will go and watch. Hmm. So the market will be rewarded with that kind of a film. So for that, you need to do good promotional, good marketing activities and create a brand name. Create right. a brand name. So they, when they say a maintain film, the people will run to watch it. That's what yeah. we should be looking at. So this mock mm. is a new mock, what we did on the on the new out new scenario. So what we see mm. here is a, a kind of a, a, a thing where they have asked for a consultant. Consultant has come out and said something about a differentiation strategy. So uh, the the we, our, your view will be to focus on a differentiation strategy. Hmm. Okay. So this you will yeah. end up in, in, in a way saying that it is, uh, you know, um, the value chain will bring, uh, value chain analysis will bring good results for the company and probably will be able to increase the margin through the good value chain. Okay, value chain is a right. very, very important link important aspect mm. for our company. Mm. So that's it. So that's good. So that's the first mark on that one. So we will continue mm. on the four sections on this one uh, once we meet next. How is your diary next week, Veena? Um, uh, yeah, so same Saturday, Sunday is fine with me again. Yeah, Saturday I'm all right this next week, uh, same time. Sunday, I have a problem. Mm. Uh, Sunday. Oh, what we can do is we can mm. meet one on Saturday and then uh, the week starting. Uh, you said after I mean, that, that your mother in law uh, is here, no? Yes, yeah, so uh, right. I mean, after 25, she is here. Okay. After yeah. 25, she is here. So, right. so we will do it on Saturday. Saturday. We will do it on Saturday, 21st, 11 o'clock. I am free. Hmm. We will do it on okay. Sunday. I have a church meeting. Uh, but Saturday right. we will do it, and then after that we will fix up once we meet on Saturday, we will fix up some uh, days for from the 25th on. Yeah, so. yeah, so Thursday or Friday, anything is fine yeah. with me. No then. problem, yeah. we will we'll try to do something like that, yeah. Okay, Veena, so I'll see you yeah. on Saturday at 11 o'clock, same time, next week. No problem, Kumal, okay. 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 Thank you, Thank take you so care. Much. Right. Yeah. Okay, Thank bye, you. bye, bye. bye. bye.